And good Wednesday morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Maria Bartiromo. President Biden addressing the nation last night in his first State of the Union address, blaming American companies for skyrocketing inflation, not his own failed policies. The panic also disrupted the global supply chain. Factories close. When that happens, it takes longer to make goods and get them to the warehouses, to the stores, and go, prices go up. One third of all the inflation was because of automobile sales. There weren't enough semiconductors to make all the cars that people wanted to buy. And guess what? Prices of automobiles went way up, especially used vehicles as well. Small businesses and family farmers and ranchers, I need not tell some of my Republican friends from those states. Guess what? You got four basic meatpacking facilities. That's it. You play with them, or you don't get to play at all. And you pay a hell of a lot more. A hell of a lot more because there's only four. Joining me right now is the 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump, to react to last night's happenings. Mr. President, thanks very much for being with me this morning. Good morning. Let me start off with getting your overall reaction to the State of the Union last night, Mr. President. What struck you most? Well, I thought it was terrible because he didn't talk inflation. He didn't have any ideas for inflation. And most importantly, he didn't talk about energy with oil and what's happened. We were energy independent one year ago. We were exporting energy for the first time ever in the history of our country. We were going to double the size this year. We'd be double the size of Saudi Arabia and Russia combined. Uh, we would have, number one, the event in Ukraine would have never happened if I were president. It would have never happened. There was no way it was happening. If it did happen, let's say it did happen, we'd be yep. exporting oil to everybody. And that would have kept it from happening in itself because Russia wouldn't be making a fortune on oil. So uh, it's crazy what's what? happened. I look at the numbers. They're the highest numbers in years, many years, oil. Yeah. So let's let's talk solutions, because uh, we know that the Saudis have refused a request by this administration to increase production. Oil is the story. Brent and crude topping one hundred and nine dollars a barrel right now. Mr. President, should uh, Joe Biden immediately reopen the moratorium on, on oil and the sector and drilling in the U.S.? What is the solution to getting oil prices lower? Well, of course he should, and uh, I see that Saudi and Saudi Arabia and also OPEC as a whole, uh, they've rejected every single request that they've made. We're like a bunch of fools. We had energy so low. In fact, I was fighting to keep it up. Do you remember it went down to numbers that nobody's ever seen before? We got it back up. We got it to forty dollars, and that was good. Everybody could make money, and yet at the same time, we were a dollar eighty-seven at the pump for gasoline. We never had it so good, and we were doubling the size of our companies. Everything was incredible. And then these guys came along, and I saw that you mentioned border a little while ago. They opened the border. Uh, three weeks, they could have finished the wall. The wall was almost complete, and they could have finished the wall. And we had the strongest border we've ever had, and that included not only for people getting through illegally, that also included drugs and uh, trafficking, human trafficking, which is a tremendous problem. We had the best border we've ever had in the history of our country. Now we have the worst, and we have the worst situation in oil that we've ever had. And this is what's causing inflation. You know, if you want to knock inflation or at yeah. least take a big chunk out of it, what you do is lower the hell out of your oil prices, and we could do that. But it's going to take a while to start it up. I mean, the problem is with this gentleman, he really destroyed it, and it's going to take a while to— to do it, we had we would have been so, selling to everybody in Europe. We were we were we were uh, hitting it, home run after home run after home run, and then it was just ended, stupidly ended. And now you know they well, the uh, they talk the climate, but the climate we had the best numbers on climate, we had the best air numbers, the best water numbers, mm, cleanest water, cleanest yeah. air in decades. Instead, Mr. President, uh, the administration is actually increasing its imports from Russia. My guests earlier in the show said that they expect oil to go to $150 a barrel, even $200 uh, if uh, sanctions uh, are placed on Russian gas. Should the president put sanctions on the oil sector of Russia? He should open it up in the United States, and he should buy no, no oil whatsoever from Russia. But he should open it up. It'll take a while. That's the problem. We had it there already. And this would have been uh, our country would have made an absolute fortune, more money than it's ever made on this 
situation. Now, the situation itself would have never happened, so we wouldn't have had that problem. But we had low energy costs, and we were it was very abundant. And now they've closed all the leases. They've uh, they've ended uh, exploration. They knocked out Anwar in yeah. Alaska, which could have been bigger than Saudi Arabia. It was going to be among the biggest sites in the world. Could have been as big or bigger than Saudi Arabia. They knocked it out. It took 50 years of. Uh, people trying to get it approved. Nobody could get Ronald Reagan couldn't get it approved. I got it approved, and they knocked it out in one day. So where do you think oil prices are going, and will that have an impact on the broader economy? What is your take? Well, they're going unlimited right now. You can't even project. It could go anything. It could go unlimited. I, I couldn't believe last night when he said what, that to he was going to continue to buy. Uh, oh, yeah. Why? I mean, why not? I mean, you you won't be able to get it. And OPEC loves it. They're making a fortune. You know, you say Saudi Arabia, uh, they're making a fortune. Why would they do anything? They have him over a barrel. The only thing he can do is just say, sorry about it with the climate hoax. Sorry about it. Look, this climate situation is killing our country. And I know it's politically not correct because people don't understand it, and they don't. But I understood it with the best air, the best water, the best everything else, and not destroying our businesses. This is killing our country. Uh, we have China that doesn't partake. We have India that doesn't partake. And we have Russia that don't partake. None of them partake in cleaning the climate. They laugh at us how stupid we are. We clean the climate, and then their air flows to us from Asia, just like all their garbage flows to us through the Pacific Ocean. You ever see what happens in— what? Los Angeles, where hundreds and thousands of tons of China garbage is floating, the tides bring it right. So we have nice, clean water, wow. and you're not allowed to put your toe in the water, and yet you have 25,000 tons of garbage flowing in from China and other countries in Asia and hitting us on the West Coast. Uh, we are, we are yeah. so foolish. Uh, the, the, the whole thing uh, with the climate— is uh, just out of control. Unless everybody's going to do it, it makes us non-competitive. And everybody has to do it. That includes China and Russia and India and many other countries. Just starting it because we had to, because they were unable to stop it. Well, many of our adversaries did not know what to expect with you, Mr. President. I want to get your take on how Joe Biden needs to respond to people like Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. I mean, given the atrocious actions taken by Putin in the last seven days, possible crimes against humanity, that's what Boris, uh, Boris Johnson just said, crimes against humanity, uh, would you still afford Putin respect at this time, and how would you push back on Xi Jinping for the continued surveillance and theft of intellectual property right now? The biggest problem we have is that our president and our country is no longer respected. Now, Russia has gotten in deeper than they ever thought possible, so they would, frankly, I think they probably would be right now in a good position to do something with. I think they're in much deeper than they thought, to a certain extent because of the, the weapons that I gave and that the Ukrainians used so well. I mean, they used so well. Amazing. So I think Russia is something could be done with them right now because they're not they're not like looking what? so What's good. The they're solution? looking but they are looking well they have to you have to work out a deal. They have to stop killing these people. They're killing all these people. And they have to stop it, and they have to stop it now. But they don't respect the United States, and the United States is like, I don't know, they're, they're not doing anything about it. This is, a, this is a holocaust. This is a horrible thing that's happening. You're witnessing it, and you're seeing it on television every night. Who can believe that they're, sh so, they're taking army so tanks and they're it, taking missiles and oil? shooting them into buildings? Do you hit their oil sector? Do you hit their energy well, sector? You do you get oil? where Putin's money is? You stop buying their oil, and that will do it. You stop buying their oil, because they're right now with, with all of the banking stuff, but they're letting all these billions of dollars a day go back into Russia. You stop buying their oil, and you open up your own oil. We don't need oil from these countries. These countries are not our friends. We don't need oil from them. We have more oil. You know, the biggest advantage we have over China is the fact that they don't have oil, and we do. It's, right, it's liquid gold under our feet. And we have oil, and China doesn't. So China has to go out and get it. Now, they're getting it from Iran and making Iran rich because that allowed. And the, the worst thing is, this whole, is that China and Russia 
because of Biden and Obama, they've, they've formed an alliance. And that is something that this world never wanted to see happen. China and Russia have formed a partnership. They formed an alliance. And that's something that you never wanted to see happen. And we had the Russia, Russia, and, and Russia to, hoax. Yeah, we have to mention yeah. that in that partnership, Mr. President, Iran has been allowed into the fold. They were yeah. doing joint exercises, right. the three of them. Now Joe Biden is trying to get us back into the Iran deal, the deal that you took America out of. Um, uh, amazingly, Russia is negotiating on our behalf. Your thoughts of, on the Iran threat. What should the U.S. do now? Well, it's all stuff you can't believe. Russia is our chief negotiator in the Iran deal. The Iran deal was going to meant the end of Israel, and it meant nuclear weapons. You know, when I did uh, Jerusalem, the, the capital for Israel, when I did that, they thought it was the biggest deal. No, the biggest deal was I ended the Iran deal. You're not going to have an Israel if that deal goes through. You won't have an Israel. Israel will be obliterated uh, at, within a period of time. And what they've done is they've brought back, they're trying to make an even worse deal than it was the one that I terminated. I terminated a deal that was so bad and so dangerous for our country, for Israel, and yeah. for everyone else, because these are zealots, and they will use those weapons. They will use those weapons. And I had it totally stopped. Now China is making them rich because China is buying oil. Yeah. They weren't allowed to buy oil when I was president, and we were going to make a great deal with Iran, and everybody would have been happy. Well— Real quick, Mr. President, on China, they canceled the China initiative. This was a, an investigation that you started because of the intellectual property theft. Why is Joe Biden canceling the investigation of property theft? Has it stopped? Well, I don't know, but he got a million, a billion and a half dollars uh, from China, and a lot of people worry about that. He got a billion and a half dollars. And he's being so nice to China. It's amazing. And China's not our friend. China is a highly competitive uh, group of people that are not looking to help the United States. They couldn't believe when I did the All tariffs right. on them. I saved our steel industry. Yep. They couldn't believe it. But they paid us hundreds of billions of dollars during my term. They never paid us 10 cents. At any other time, they paid us hundreds yep. of billions of dollars. They were very happy Mr. to see President, us leave. Final, final question here. Uh, we all remember the pictures of Nancy Pelosi standing behind you in your State of the Union back in 2020 and ripping up your script. Any thoughts of Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris sitting there behind President Biden last night and uh, applauding and, 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 and standing up for his State of the Union? Your reaction? Yeah, well, if you read the paper, she's not allowed to rip up scripts. You're not allowed to do that. That's a very important thing. That's not a script. That's a very important speech, State of the Union speech. So she's not allowed to do that. Historical. So if you read the papers, why is, she why is she allowed to do that? So it's very interesting. But, no, look, uh, I watched them. They were so gleeful. It was a false lee. You know, they're jumping up and down and hopping around and smiling at each other, the two of them. And it, what he said was, just so bad for our country. He didn't talk about oil prices. He didn't talk about inflation, meaning anything to do to fix it. And by the way, we had a very big night last night that nobody talks about either in Texas. I endorsed 33 yeah. candidates, many of whom were not favored. I endorsed 33 candidates, and every one of those candidates either won and won easily, like the governor, like the lieutenant governor, etc. They either won and won easily, or they're very substantially leading and they'll have a primary, and they're going to mm. win in the primary. So, you know, we had 33 yeah, well, for 33 last night. It's, congrats. We are on uh, Nobody's the midterm gonna write watch, that. for hey, sure. Maria, nobody's going to write it that. It has begun. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The Mr. season President, is beginning, so but we had a big night. This morning. Thank you very much, we Maria. We so appreciate you. you joining me this morning, Mr. President. Thank you, President Donald Trump. Mark